Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble and we go until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and we'll get to our citizens panel in just a bit, but we want to make a, uh, um, a little uh, call right now. Okay, well, uh, it's time for us to try calling our old friend. Let me see here. Let me... Uh, that's the sound of Skype dialing a landline. And then we got to wait for it to connect. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see here. Yeah? Is he going to be there? Well, maybe he's not there today. Okay. Give him a little more, a little more of a chance here. Hello. Oh, there you are. Hey, what's up? It's Alex. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on. Bad connection. Bad connection. Hello. You want me to try calling you back? Who it is? Who it is? Huh? Who am it? It's Alex. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot all about that. It is the 12th. I'm sorry. Okay, we can talk. We can talk. Let me get my coffee. Hold on. Okay. We're still unpacking. Things are going nuts. I'm sorry about that. Totally forgot, but here I am just for you. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on. Mm. Let me get my coffee. I'm going to the other room. There may be some echo because there's no furniture there. and just a bunch of boxes. Now I'll go, I'll go in the other room. Yeah. Sorry. Don't tape yet. Don't tape yet. Okay, now let me close the door. And we're ready. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Hey, I'm all yours. Well, well, we've actually been taping all along, but I love it. Well, way. great. Well, this is the, like the candid the Edward, what is this, Edward Murrow interview at home show. Yeah, so put I, a cigarette in your hand and start asking me questions. You, usually I send you a note, and I sent you one today just to remind you, but I guess you didn't check your email. So I checked them at 4 in the morning when I got up, but then uh, I didn't see that one then, so uh, whatever. But you get uh, here up. I am. Sorry about that. All is well. You get up at four in the morning. Mm-hmm. What kind of a comic Except are you? An old, two-thirds retired comic. That's what I am. <laughs> but I'm not working. I'm usually in bed by like nine o'clock, and I'm usually up at four in the morning. And it's time for coffee and Frank Sinatra singing the coffee song to wake me up. Yeah. Well, by the way, let me just uh, just by way of identifying you, say this is Stephen Pearl. In case you didn't know. That's right, That's in case anybody cares. Uh, it's our first big show coming from Las Vegas, baby! It, it, yeah, uh, we should have a big Las Vegas show opening here for you. We did, I had one last night, so uh, it's all done. Now it's uh, the morning after. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I had too many root beers last night. Yeah, yeah, so what have you done so far? In, uh, in uh, have, you, have you worked? Uh, yes, I did. Last night, I had my very first uh, Vegas show as a citizen here, so I popped my cherry last night. So where, it went, where, where, it went where, real well, and some guy wants to work me for some uh, other gig, so we'll see what happens with that. I'm oh, just oh. starting to put a little fingerprint here. So yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, so Nutty Cuckoo Town. What, 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 where did you work? On Uncle Funny's Chuckle Hut? Uncle Funny's Chuckle Hut? No, they closed now. They're Benito's Clown College or Mario's Methadone Clinics now, usually the same building. <laughs> so uh, it's like when you find A&W uh, Root Beer and KFC in the same building now. It's kind of like a, you know, one of those things, a, a merger. So uh, no, it was uh, this lounge at the Eclipse Theater in Las Vegas. It was a lot of fun. First, there was nobody there. Then there were a couple of people there. Then, like a minute before showtime, about 40, 50 people showed up. So, oh. yeah, a nice little uh, fireside chat show, and it went real, real well. So, good. I'm very happy about that. Good, 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 good. Well, so you're, you're dipping your toe into Vegas. Dipping my toe into Vegas. Soon I'll be romping with Wayne Newton. Is that Wayne or is that the wax figure of Wayne? I can't tell which is which anymore. Tell me, tell and, me, uh, tell me. Tomorrow, me. tomorrow I fly up to San Francisco. <laughs> the one time I get more than one gig up there at a time, it's right after I move down here, so I got to fly up tomorrow. You have to fly to San Francisco. So what are you doing in San Francisco? 
Well, besides twiddling my thumbs and looking for a beam to hang myself, <laughs> just kidding, kids, don't try it at home. Uh, I'm going to be playing uh, Brian Copeland's show at the, where is it, San Leandro Center for the Performing Arts, then the big comedy day thing in the park, then the Throckmorton Theater in Mill Valley, then I come back to Vegas, and I'll probably never see 415 again. So wait a minute, you're getting more work out of San Francisco since you just moved. This one time, it's the one time the planets line up. It's like Haley's Comet. <laughs> It'll happen again in 88 years, but yeah. I don't think I'll be around then. Yeah, yeah. So it's, Yeah, but the, yeah it's, the timing is totally screwed up, but what are you going to do? Do you think maybe you can make a living in Vegas? I don't know. Uh, I'm not looking to take over the town and work every night and be a big star, but, uh, you know, it's uh, there's, there's a lot of gigs here, and I want to do a bunch of them, so we'll see what happens. I'm just going to take it easy. Uh, one step at a time, one step at a time, grant me the serenity for the gigs I can't get and all that other crap. Now, is there a lot, is there any comedy at the, uh, the big hotels, or are they just basically magic acts? They, well, oh, yeah, see, uh, people who make an audience disappear. Um, I, I drove down the strip the other day, and <laughs> there's all these signs appearing tonight, uh, lefty smurs, and all these... I didn't recognize 95% of the names, so I, I don't know. I go, well, I'll fit in perfectly in this town, so, uh, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but, uh, it's, you know, you don't see Sinatra's name or Sammy's name or any names you really recognize anymore. Times yeah. have changed, but pot is legal here, so God bless it. You know, I, I, the sign that I'm getting old is that I don't know half these names I see as today's stars, you know? I, I, Half of them. I don't know any of them. I watch, I watch this show every day called TMZ, right? It's like a gossip show. Oh, sure. And uh, TMZ Live. And uh, yeah. uh, about 90% of the people they're talking about, I don't know who the fuck they are. It's just, oh, man, it's like, the same. It's and, the same. And they yeah, yeah. Harvey Levin, you're the Antichrist. They treat them like they're all stars. So I assume they I know. are. Why you know. Mm -hmm. But... You know where mo who most of the stars are now? Uh, people who have podcasts. <laughs> Podcast stars, that's right. Well, yeah, and they're very yeah, few of them. The way of the future. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wonder why I have like 13 people listening to my podcast, but, uh, you know. That's a these, well, more than I had. These people get a gajillion or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how it works. I don't know. How it works. I'm getting modern very, age. I, I'm and, getting, uh, getting I'm very. I'm still listening to my uh, well, Marshall Tucker records. I, I don't do makeup tips, you know. <laughs> and, well, then you're out, man. Yeah. You'll never catch one. Uh, maybe I should do like an old man's makeup tips. How to cover up those age spots on your hands? Or that, bring them out more so you get a discount on the bus. There's too much rouge. <laughs> too much rouge. <laughs> you know, oh, that's you know, can I, can I, I say this? Raymond I, Burr's nipple rouge. There's a, a modern fashion thing going on that uh -huh. somehow, number one, I never liked it when I was younger, and I mm -hmm. sure as hell don't like it now. All yeah. these fucking tattoos. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Everybody's tattooed now it, all I over mean, the place. I, no, but I mean really tattooed. You know, they do whole shit. Heavily tattooed. What they call sleeves. You know, uh -huh. and I'm going, yeah. okay, now that's very fashionable. And by the way, that's a lovely looking sleeve. I mean, like the guy who's got the best tattoos in the business is The Rock because they're tribal yeah. tattoos and he's from Samoa or his family uh -huh. is from Samoa. So it works, okay? But mm -hmm. most of these tattoos are just, <laughs> some, some of these women do it like, uh, 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 what's the name, uh, uh, Michael Jackson's daughter. I'm trying to remember her name now. Uh, she's got like, there's one here, Popeye, and then there's another one somewhere else or something else, and there's no cohesion. You know, when the people get the sleeves and they're very colorful, okay, I'll pass that off as art, all right? Yeah. That, that I can yep. almost accept. But, uh, you know, when they get these things all over the place, because they got one tattoo and they like that, so they got another one somewhere else and it has nothing to do with the other tattoo, <laughs> it's like the architecture in L.A. All these buildings that don't look good together are together. I mean, so. it's just ugly, you know. And, yeah. And, and yep. there's it's another. The style. It's the style. There's another thing. I, I don't know about you, but when I have sex, I like my women naked. And when yeah. they've got, <laughs> and when they don't want no tramp stamp, do you? And the, it, no. And when, when they've got tattoos all over their body, like the whole sleeve and everything, it's like they're fucking dressed. 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> Oh, man. I'm, so, I mean, to I'm really old-fashioned that way. My wife has a tattoo. She has one on a her... A tattoo. She has there's, one... There's on, a tattoo and many tattoos. No, she has a tattoo on her ankle that says Buddy. Buddy. Yeah. Now, I don't know who the hell Buddy was, but she's going to drop dead, and Buddy's still going to be with her. <laughs> she might have had a tour yeah. affair with Buddy Epson at one time. You'll have to ask it. But I just don't, you know, I just don't understand uh, these people who go out and get like the whole sleeve and the whole uh, huge tattoos or tattoo half their body. Don't they realize that someday they're going to be an old lady, and all that stuff's <laughs> going to be on wrinkled skin? Oh yeah, sure. But I don't you care. I, some... I I don't care how how much you work out, folks. It's still wrinkles. Okay. Yeah, it's going to sag and it's going to wriggle. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't do something today you're going to regret tomorrow. And, and yep. oh, yeah, maybe they'll come out with some way that they can remove those tattoos. But every today, if you want a tattoo removed, it's very painful. It's more painful than getting the tattoo. Yeah, so, I have one. It hurt. Yeah. What, what is your tattoo? My tattoo is of a screaming demon on my upper arm, my upper left arm. Johnny Winter had a big one on his chest, and one day we got tattooed together. He got something on his ankle, and I dug what he had on his chest, but I got, got a smaller one on my arm. So we had a big tattoo picnic, him and me and his girlfriend and a couple of roadies, and, and then we had an earthquake. It was quite a day to remember. It was hero pressure, was it? I want. I always wanted a tattoo, and I go, well, "That's a cool design. It's hard. It's it's like this. It looks like this Oriental dragon head type thing." Now, will you be happy? And, uh, with, will you be happy with that when you're eighty? Uh, well, I, I got it over thirty years ago, and I have no regrets. I only have one, so yeah, you know, and a short sleeve shirt hides it. So I don't look like Lyle Tuttle or something. So who's like totally tattooed all over? And, and, but uh, no, I, I won't regret it at all. It's faded a bit, but it's still there. So it, it reminds me of a fun day I had, a fun time. It, so uh, it, it, I, I don't think I get another one unless it was on the bottom of my foot. You know, if I get the bottom of my feet, totally tattooed. And because trend, right trends change, okay. So mm -hmm. when these people are like eighty or seventy-five, mm -hmm. they're going to be kids around them going, "Have you seen Grandma? She's got one of those tattoos from back in the uh, back in the you know in the in the in the, in the tens or the fifteens or the <laughs> teens." And, and yeah, it will literally the, say yeah, them, it will literally say how fucking old you are. <laughs> yeah, remember the main. Hey, whoa, she's old. I have no tattoo. I, I and I never yeah, wanted no a tattoo. I never wanted a fucking tattoo. Uh, the first time I ever came into contact with somebody who got a tattoo was sailors in the navy used to get tattoos, yeah. and the reason they got tattoos wasn't because they wanted tattoos is because they would do shore leave, get really drunk, and the next yep. morning come back with a tattoo. You know, they yep. decided and that was a good idea. Remember. And uh, so w I'm, I'm in the Navy, and I'm on a bunk, and the bunk underneath me is another guy, and about 6 o'clock in the morning when we're about ready to get up, I hear from the bunk below me, Oh, my fucking God! <laughs> I didn't remember it. And I said, what, what, what's, what's wrong? Did you hurt yourself? What? And he went, I had this band -aid bandage on my leg, and I pulled it off. Look, the road runner. <laughs> he got the road runner. He got really drunk the <laughs> night before, went into a tattoo parlor, and said, put a road runner on my leg. Now, to this day, <laughs> if that guy's alive, he's still got that fucking road runner on his leg. That's right. Well, they can't remove them now, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. He may still have it if he's still around. You they, never can, know. they can only remove them, I think, if they're certain colors. Like red can be removed and blue can be removed, but I think black can't be. Uh, well, black, I saw some. I saw some documentary of some skinhead nut who got his entire face tattooed with swastikas and this and that and other garbage, and he he came to his senses, wasn't into that anymore, and he had him removed. Some people, tattoo removal people, that they do it for nothing. And it took a, like a year and a half, like he had different sessions and everything, first layer, second layer, third layer. But eventually they were all taken off and they show pictures before and after. And you can't tell the guy was ever tattooed. 
Really? Yeah, it took a long-ass time to get rid of it. But, yeah, they, lasers can do anything now. Yeah. But, lasers can do anything. They, they but, double my, on sacks. They walk the dog. They do everything. So uh, My question but, is, uh, how, they, how expensive is that? There you go. You got to mortgage a few houses, including your neighbors and everyone else on the block. Yeah, I mean, the tattoo cost you 50 cents, and the goddamn removal of the tattoo exactly. cost you thousands exactly. of dollars. And it's usually it's the same it's the same guy who does both. So <laughs> oh, the big money's in removal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they get, you, they get you on both ends, right? Oh, yeah. You make a few dollars at uh, putting the thing on, but taking it off, that's where you get the Cadillac money. <laughs> Years ago, when tattoos weren't as fashionable, I knew the greatest tattoo guy in america his name was spider webb oh johnny had a couple of tattoos done by him yeah spider sure. webb was the go-to guy if, and he was he worked out of westchester because you couldn't have a tattoo parlor in manhattan i, I and i think it might, right. it might still be true because i don't see tattoo parlors anymore yeah yeah they gotta go they and, do it there but uh, and, it's not really enforced and, but and so he did him out of westchester well. and i mean i gotta tell you his work was phenomenal yeah, uh, I've but, seen books of his stuff, but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't have wanted to do it. But I knew him, and and he was he was, he was sensational. And if you were going to get a tattoo and you wanted a good tattoo, you went to Spider Web. Yeah, you know. I think the one on my arm is a Spider Web copy. It's a, it's the one Johnny had was done by Spider Web. Oh, it's, it's a spi- I had the exact same design done by Spider Web. Yeah, I, that, I think it is a Spider Web. Yeah, and that's like the Mona Lisas they sell on street corners in Paris. You know? <laughs> Here you go. Van Gogh, V A N Van Gogh, Van Gogh. I think this is a copy. The best, the best thing I ever saw in my life is I'm in Paris, and I'm walking the River Seine, and I go, you know, they have and they have these kiosks like crazy, people selling things, postcards and whatever and whatever. And at this one, there is a, I guess a, oh, I don't know, I guess it was something like about uh, paper size, uh, you know standard legal paper size uh, yeah. uh, picture of the Mona Lisa. Yeah. And on it, the guy had put a sign that read, Reproduction. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, boy. does anybody really think that across from uh, the Louvre, uh, some guy <laughs> is actually selling the Mona Lisa and he has to make it apparent <laughs> That it isn't. Come on, I got the Mona Lisa for sale. You buy it, I'll throw in Whistler's mother for nothing. Come on, who could resist? I mean, it wasn't even the same. It wasn't even the same size as the Mona Lisa. Okay, it was (laughs) little little Lisa. Little Lisa, yeah, little Lisa. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Uh, and I, I just always that always amazed me that they felt they had to put reproduction. Maybe it's a law in France or something, some stupid law. Yeah, well, there's a lot of rooms out there. Oh my God, the Mona Lisa on the street for a dollar fifty two. It's my lucky day. Yeah, and and you go to the you go to the Louvre and everybody's staring at the Mona Lisa. They're all lined up around looking at the Mona Lisa, not realizing that the Mona Lisa that's there may not be the Mona Lisa because it's been stolen <laughs> so many fucking times over the years yeah. that who knows yeah. if the real one got returned. But everybody's there going, oh, look, the Mona Lisa, you know. Look at that's that. good enough. I don't know how that became the most famous painting in the world. I mean, there are better paintings than the Mona Lisa. I think even... Uh, it was, it uh, was the mysterious smile. Yeah. Nobody knew what it was all about. It's not even called the Mona Lisa. I don't know where that came from. It's called La Giaconda. Oh, really? That, that was the official name of it? It's called La Giaconda. Is the name of the mm. painting. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. I did not know that. Yeah. And it's French. It's Italian. But it's in a French museum. That's another thing I never got. Is why <laughs> you go to the Louvre and there's stuff that is stolen from all over the world. <laughs> You know, yeah, oh God. I went it's into like a warehouse for stolen the, goods, man. The, the, the Louvre is not to me the best museum. The best museum is a museum called Musée d'Orsay, which in which they took an old railway station and turned it into this just absolutely magnificent museum. And that's where all the Van Goghs are now and so on. And you walk in and one of the biggest paintings on the wall there is Whistler's mother, uh-huh. which is an American painting. Yeah, that's right. The French own the Mona, uh, own the Whistler's mother. 
Uh, and, I, and Michael Jackson owns Paul McCartney's songs. There ain't no justice, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, there ought to be a law. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, that that ama- that always amazed me. That you know, I would think Whistler's mother would be in the American some American museum somewhere like the Smithsonian. Oh yeah, sure, somewhere so in the Midwest or the Heartland. No. Whistler's mother. No, it just sits there, and, and everybody goes and looks at it and goes, "Yeah, real French painting that is," you know. Yeah. <laughs> So I never, I, I never, agree. I never understood how it that does. happened. Makes no sense. It's all right. That's our painting. Let's get it back. President Trump, get that painting back for us. You see, I'm going to get Whistler's mother's back for the Americans. It's a big painting. It's a huge painting, and it's made with paint. Thank you, Mr. President. Oh, did you hear the latest about Trump today? <laughs> what about him? What did he say now? He tweeted that three thousand people didn't die in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, God. It, 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 it's, it's a lie oh, being Lord. perpetuated by the Democrats. Okay. Oh, man. Holy crap. Listen, even the, oh, even, boy. even the Puerto Rican people, when the estimate was finally solidified, were surprised that it was that high. You know? Yeah. Uh, but it was. Uh, and, yeah. And, and, and this people is, died. And this isn't just people that died after the fact. Although there were some people who died after the fact, but this was basically as a direct result of the of the hurricane. And and, yeah. and Trump is trying to say, you know, we, we're really very successful down there. What? Yeah, yeah, we did great. It was one big wet. There was a big wet storm, and we gave paper towels, and everybody was happy. And there were three people who died, and they died of old age. Yeah, I don't get it. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. I mean, what? This ain't the planet I signed up for, folks. You know, you know, uh, I like entertainment. Uh, this is yeah. not, a, this is too much entertainment. I'm sorry. It's way too much entertainment. It's way too much. Oh, too much cream in the coffee. Yeah. Too much sugar. No, no. Take but, it off. I mean, it's getting to a point where comedians aren't even doing jokes anymore because th- nothing is funnier than the reality. I, you, can't, you can't beat what's really going on. It's insane. It's well, like I, President Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Well, <laughs> How do you beat that? I was talking to Rob Schneider, and uh, uh, Schneider, I, I said to him, so are you doing any Trump stuff? And he says, no. And I said, why? He's too easy. Too yeah, easy. Too easy. <laughs> you know, it, 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 Everybody's doing Trump jokes. He said, it, the whole thing is just too easy, you know. Uh, yeah. it, it should be it should be more difficult than that. Yeah, uh, it and, is too easy. Uh, I, I do a few things, but they're funny. <laughs> it's uh, they have the pearl trademark on them, but uh, yeah. not a lot, you know, because the real stuff is just too insane to beat. So. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think it, I may be mistaken. I don't know. I can't speak for him, but I think Rob was for Trump originally. You know, really? I don't, I don't when you make see, your first million, you're for Trump. I don't see how people can be for Trump. I just, I, at this point, I mean, I can see how maybe they voted for him and thought maybe, you know, they had hope that this guy was going to be able to change things because he didn't want to do business as usual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's not but, a politician and he's taking a different approach and drained the swamp, blah, blah, blah. And but, they fell for it, the old snake oil salesman. And uh, now... Look what's going on, but there's still going to be that always going to be that percentage that supports him no matter what. He could eat a baby on live TV. Well, they did it for America. But how Even you when can, Nixon was ready to quit, like I think 30 percent of the population was still for him. So. How, how you can doggedly defend him now? You know. <laughs> there are people who defend Manson. Well, you know, he's just trying to make room for more people. So I, know, I have one either. guy who says, "Well, he's keeping up his campaign promises. That's why I like him." Yeah, and I went, when he, made, he said he would do. When he made those campaign promises, everybody went, ah, you know, nobody keeps their campaign promises. He won't do that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, but he, you know, he's keeping up. He, yeah. He, he, he's literally dismantling our fine little country. So. Yeah. Yes, and giving it to the damn Russians. Well, here we go. I'll tell you, my wife is in China. I should have Ch- seen it. My wife is in China and all the people there that she was talking to. You're going, what's with your president? <laughs> it was like the whole thing. What's with your president? It wasn't like, you know, oh, that president, your president is a jerk or whatever. What's with him? What kind of nutcase oh, is he? All the corruption of Nixon and all the stupidity of George W. Bush. He's two, two, two presidents in one. And you know, and you know what a, a Trump supporter would say about what I just said? Oh, well, those are the Chinese, <laughs> you know. 
They have the Chinese. They, they ain't they, humans. They, they, they've been stealing from they, us for years. No, they they're have, yellow snowflakes. They haven't been stealing from us for years. They've just been competing better. You know, if we could steal, yeah. if we could steal well, we'd do it too. And, and, that's and right. We, and we've done it, as a matter of fact. You know. Yep, that's true. We've done it for a long, long time. For a long, long time. Well, you, listen, we've uh, kind of run out of time here, fella. Holy crap, that was fun, except for the first minute when I was confused. But <laughs> I'm not confused anymore. Live and direct, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the musical... A swinging town! It's the musical stylings of Stephen Pearl. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Mm -hmm. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Okay, let me see here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Are we there? There we go. Okay, I did it. Boy, uh, I, uh, I, I've got something wrong with my earphones tonight. For some reason, they're, they're uh, distorted uh, slightly. Hi. Hope everything's going out okay. I hope you can hear us fine. And all is right with the world. Uh, it is time now for me to go to the Skype. Um, if you don't know how to call this program, just go to gabnet.net. And on the right-hand side of the page, on the right-hand side of the page is a whole tutorial on, on how to do it, how to be part of the citizens panel and to uh, enjoy yourself. Okay, all right, okay. Anyway, uh, 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 the, so people will start calling and we will have a citizens panel and uh, the, you'll see what the citizen panel is. That's what makes this show different than other shows. I turned on the air conditioner and now it's cold in here, so I'm turning it off. Okay, less noise, okay. Anyway, uh, look, uh, give me a call. Uh, it's time for us to just sit around here and bullshit for the next hour and a half. I have nothing much to say. I was listening to, uh, I was listening to uh, uh, Damien, and he was talking about, uh, about the new uh, Apple and the fact that, and it is, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing that they're, they're doing uh, out there. Uh, uh, it's, uh, oh, you know what? I've got to do something here. Hold on. I'll, I'll mention that in a second. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I've got to, uh, 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 here, well, let me just go to the picture with our friend here. Um, but I gotta, I've got to, what I've got to do is I've got to, oh, I've got to get all these people just right. I've, I, I, I screwed up my screen earlier today. And there we go. Now we're fine. I think we're fine. All right, let me just change it. Ah, there we go. I I screwed up my screen earlier today, and uh, so it's uh, we're, we're kind of. T let me let me let me just try and change something here. You see that 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 needs a little changing, and then we do that, and then we would do that. Hold on a second. I gotta adjust my screen. There we go. I think we're okay now. I think we're all right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, 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 yeah, let me just change that. There we go. Okay. Got it all done now. What I did is I, I changed the size of my screen earlier today by accident, and I didn't know how it would be once I got back on the air. But look, it's beautiful now. You can tell because there are two of the handsomest human beings that we have on this program. And also one of the loveliest women we have has just joined us, the lovely and attractive Charlene Martinez. And so I can just leave and let you just all stay here and talk to each other. Oh, hey. Uh, you must have to pee. <laughs> no, I don't have to pee today. Today I've so, got the trots. What? Uh, yeah, it, I turned into the news, and all of a sudden I saw the uh, town above Boston is, uh, is burning. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a, a gas pipe ex, uh, backed up and exploded, and uh, it, it's it sounds awful. Well, you know, it's the Democrats' fault. Oh, it's no, okay. it's Trump's fault. Oh, okay. Oh, learn? well, you finally admit that it's Trump's fault. Okay. Hey, if the sun comes up in the morning, it's Trump's fault. Oh, 
I, I, I'm, I'm amazed that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, Trump today uh, uh, finally uh, came out with the fact that, and I felt so much better about it, okay, that 3,000 people didn't die no, in didn't. Puerto Rico, that it was a plot by the Democrats to discredit him. Well, it's true. You know, uh, they say it was 2,975. And uh, so he was telling the truth. Not 3,000. Not 3,000. Uh, no, but he, he, he said that when he left, it was 6 to 64. That's true. Yeah, well, they, they ch those things change, you know, after you throw towels to the crowd and leave. Well, bounty. That, yeah. Yeah, the bounty. Hey, you know, there was Well, what, they're the 3, quicker picker-upper. You got to realize that. And yeah. if you're going to put anything, uh, you know, you're going to do it. You're going to do that. Okay. Uh, you Alex, know, there were. Oh. Yeah. What was what was the word again that he couldn't pronounce right? Oh, uh, anonymous. Huh? Anonymous. Anonymous. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. He couldn't. That's not that hard he word could, to pronounce. He couldn't pronounce <laughs> anonymous. It's nuclear. Uh, here comes here comes Brian Ludwig, ladies and gentlemen. He's joining yeah, the it's... crowd. Let me see. Here we have to do some more adjusting. Oh, Alex. Last night he was talking about a uh, uh, Ronnie Dio or something. Yeah. Yes. I'm not. I'm not an expert on him, but I remember he died recently, and he's like a metal guy, and I could see where like eight years ago. Yeah, people would say that he, Ronnie James Dio was better than Ozzy Osbourne. I think you said right. Anybody's better than Ozzy. Osbourne. I, I, I was right. going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody. Did he better eat a bat? Dick is better than Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> You're what? My uh, dick. I, you know, you usually don't use that kind of language. Well, Brian's here, so I thought I'd beat him oh, too. Okay, good. <laughs> or he's had a couple of scotches. <laughs> yeah, you know. that that could be too. You know. I know he was going off last night. He was going off with the. You know, but he's funny. He is. He's funny. I I had dinner tonight uh, at good. this oyster bar. Oh, oh no, here. And, and uh, so as I'm sitting there having uh, eating at I was at the bar and I, I'm eating a dozen oysters and I look and I see somebody that looked really familiar. But this guy died like 10 years ago. So I, I just kept looking and his gestures were the same. Everything were the, was the same as face. His, uh, mm -hmm. So I finally walked up to him and I asked him if he was this guy, Ron Leskacek, and he he says, no, I'm sorry. My name is Charles somebody. And uh, uh, so I told him, I said, you know, this guy died 10 years ago, but I, you know, th there he was sitting in front of me. And he says, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> but it was um, it was an unusual experience to you know, sit there and see somebody that was an exact. Well, twin, if you knew but... the guy was dead. Then that yeah, but obviously was... wasn't going to be that person. So why embarrass yourself by going up to him and saying, "Are I, you Ron? Are you well, dead?" I, I didn't go to the guy's funeral, and, and it oh, was, oh, it well, was you, the so spinning. It, it, so you couldn't make sure he was dead. Well, <laughs> you know, I was told about a year after he died that he was dead, oh. and uh, so you know, oh, I see this guy. You know, you see somebody that looks so much. I mean, exactly. Same gestures, same everything. Sounds like he's talking about Trump. Yeah. No. And he looks no. dead. <laughs> well, um, I, say, I, I, I say we go lighter on Donald Trump. I, I think the man. And, I know. And I think, and I, I think it's I, time for us to, to, to go easier on the man because he's obviously mentally challenged. It, mentally challenged. Yeah, and he's a special child. A things, like speaking. Yeah. Well, then maybe he should uh, be a uh, come on to your uh, panel. You yeah. know, <laughs> you know, that you know would, Alex, that's a qualification. I, bring it on. Can I ask you something, Alex? What? I, no, you, bring it on. Make it happen. Are, you, are yeah. you a fan of American Horror Story? Have you seen the new one yet? Yeah. Oh, good. Because I watched it, and it was amazing in the beginning. It's like the other one was where, you know, everybody after the Trump election was like, oh, my God, and crying. And, you know, oh, God, it's really good, I think, isn't it? I didn't like think it was one. that great, but it was OK. Yeah, uh, we'll, see, watch, we'll uh, see where it goes. Uh, the Better Call Saul yet? Yeah. 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 yeah that was a good episode. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But yeah. you have to wait for girlfriend to watch it with her, right? Right. Well, <laughs> she came back. 
you know. Oh, she's back today, yeah. right? The only woman person I know who travels maybe two and a half days on a plane. No, wait a minute. Let's see here. What did I figure? A day and a half. She did. Well, how much total both flights? About thirty-two 36 hours. Thirty-six hours. Thirty-two. Is, uh, Thirty-two. Day and a half. Thirty-two hours is a day yeah. and a half. About a day. Travels about a day and a half to say stay somewhere for two and a half days. You know, I mean, it's just. Oh man! And isn't didn't she leave and come back on the same day almost? Yeah. Well, that- she called me yesterday. She sent me a, a a text from the airport yesterday when she was on the plane of the picture of champagne of the glass of champagne that she had there, and uh, uh, she said, "Here we go again." And it was like nine thirty, and I knew that she wasn't going to get in till about three o'clock New York time, and I'm. You know, I went to sleep, I woke up, I did a whole bunch of things, I interviewed Pearl, and I know that she's still in the fucking air. <laughs> you know? And, and I mean, I've done that trip before, too, and I know that it goes by pretty fast, although she said coming back seemed longer than mm-hmm. going. So, uh, it might have been a headwind against them. No, uh, no. Uh, 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 the headwinds, usually it's uh, it takes longer... Which way does it take longer to go? East to I west it, or west to east? I thought, uh, I thought uh, I west to east. Yeah, yeah, because you've got headwinds. West. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but like if you travel from California, go to California, it's about an hour and a half less, less. going yeah. than it is coming back. Yeah. 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 Oh, Alex, you didn't see The View today, did you? No. I, no Norm, I, Norm MacDonald, remember you were talking I about I never Norm watched McDonald? The View because I'm afraid of getting my period. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> but Norm MacDonald was on and uh, he made this, you know, uh, he's a funny guy. Like, you know, he's a comedian. You know, no, well, he's, I know no, you know he's, he's not. He's never been funny. Well, he's very droll. Yeah. He's not like the best comedian. But I kind of felt bad for him because he was making an apology on there. Today. No, no, he was making an apology for an apology. Right, he made an apology right. yesterday for the thing he, he said got in about trouble again. Yeah, the but then he made yeah. a, he made some kind of, on Howard Stern's show. He supposedly made some kind of comment to the extent that well, I have some joke about Down syndrome, and right, then everybody was on trouble. him for that. Like, you know, I mean, this guy has no brain at all. That's his problem. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, you know, I mean, if he wanted to say, hey, you know. Uh, uh, go lighter on uh, Roseanne. She's a friend of mine. I don't think she meant what she said. Uh, said I, know, I know yeah. Louis C.K. He's a terrific mm-hmm. guy. He's a wonderful family man. You know, uh, you should be go lighter on him. Uh, but once you then say, you know, I hope the uh, the uh, Me Too movement is starting to subside. It's kind of you just don't want to go there. I mean, I can't say I'm not sympathetic with him on that level. But on the other I hand, I think he was really upset because I think he's hoping that it doesn't kill, like his career, you know, because it does well, that. Well, his career has been in a dumper <laughs> for years anyway. I was going to ask you, like, you don't really care for his comedy, I guess, right? Well, yeah, he got fired from Saturday Night Live years ago, and then mm-hmm. had nothing. His career went absolutely nowhere, and then it's mm-hmm. continued to go nowhere. You know, right? And right. and I just think that if your career is going nowhere, then you probably should parse your words and make sure you didn't get drummed out of the business for something stupid you said. He had a lot of bad hair color. Like, I can see that orangey, you know, when men dye their hair and it's orangey. Yeah, I used to. I didn't realize he had gotten that old that he's dyeing his hair, you know. Yeah, well, he's afraid of people thinking of him as old. Yeah. I mean, but, that's my big gripe but about, about do age. Do you like Burt Reynolds, Alex, or, you know, what? You didn't care? did you ever, um, you know, meet him or anything? No. Um, so you don't really have a an opinion on him then, right? Well, I mean, I, I liked his work. I thought he was funny. Oh, Alex, you like that movie about, what is the dead movie where he's dead and he goes to heaven? What? You know, that one where he dies, Burt Reynolds, right? And Dom DeLuise is in it. No, that you think, you, you've got the plot all wrong. Mm-hmm. It's called The End is what you're thinking That's of. That's it, The End, sorry. And, and it's not about going to heaven or anything like that. It's about but a man. he dies or It something starts like off the very first scene is a doctor saying, you, you, you know, you have, you have like a short time to live. You've got ter- a terminal disease. And uh, he's like crying and screaming and going, and I thought I was just losing weight and looking good, you know. 
That's and, a pretty old movie. I haven't seen and, it since and, when it was out. And, and it was billed as a comedy. And I figure, right. how, do, how do you make a comedy about dying? And it is one of the best films he ever did. Oh. It, yeah, it is yeah. just terrific. It's not like Bucket List or anything, though, right? No, no. But I, I, you know, if I go looking for a copy of it, I probably won't be able to find it. But you did know? you hear they're going to do all these, like, Smokey and the Bandit marathons now and all this? Yeah, that like was that? a knucklehead picture, you know. Yeah, I don't like those movies that much. Yeah, but. Just don't say remake and, like, ugh. Oh, remake Smokey and the Bandit? Yeah, oh, God. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, they they would, would play Burt I'll, Reynolds. I'll tell you, you can remake things and make them better. Actually, uh, mm -hmm. I thought the Battlestar Galactica they did as a you know, the new Battlestar Galactica was much better than the original. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I didn't by, by see a mile. Either. I mean, I almost didn't watch the new Battlestar Galactica because the old one was so cheesy and terrible. Yeah, mm. it was like a Star Wars knockoff. But they just somebody came along and said, "Okay, we're going to do a different spin on it." You know, we're going to use all the same things. But we're going to do a different spin on it. Same names, you know, things like that. And it was, uh, I think, if everybody remembers the new Battlestar Galactica, a great show. So you can do, you can remake things and improve upon them. Um, no uh, argument there. Yeah. But, Collective. but then again, you can take a great director and have him remake something and it can suck. I mean, uh, Scorsese did Cape Fear. Uh, is that the one with uh, De Niro? De Niro, De Niro yeah. and uh, yeah. he gets burned up, and he he just keeps coming at you. That was a great movie. Did, did you ever see the original? I think Bogart. so. That's, oh Bogart. no, no, I didn't no, see the original. no! It wasn't Bogart. No, oh, there's another the one original too. was with Gre was Greg, Gregory Peck, and uh, who uh, who played the bad guy? I'm trying to remember now. Robert Mitchum. Uh, uh, I'll check that out. And, and Scorsese used the same musical score uh, by Bernard Herrmann, but it, it, that was a that was a terrible remake, you know. Really? Oh yeah, scared the shit out of me. Well, it, it. compared to the original, the original was terrific. It was just oh, a shot. great film, you know. Uh, was it terrible because it was shot for shot like the remake of The Omen was? Uh, no, 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 no. You know what they, the you know what they did? You know, you know what like they did? That. Shot for shot. And I could never figure out, because it came from a, a great director, Gus Van Zandt, who decided he was going to remake Psycho, but he was right. going to do it shot for shot, in color. And With he, the, he, and he did blonde. it. And I have yeah. no idea why he did that. It he is, did Amadeus, right? No. Gosh, Gosh Van Zandt really did off Amadeus. That. Huh? Is that Sam? Who, who did Amadeus? Sam Van Zandt? Sam Van Zandt was a radio announcer. For, uh, for no, me. no. That, well, which? Uh, who did Amadeus? Amadeus was uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, oh God. Uh, yeah, I can't remember who it is either. It won the Academy Award, though, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought it was he, the guy place. lived in Berkeley, and I and I put the carpet in his house. I, I can't remember who he uh, what his name Phillip was. Philip Kaufman. What? Oh. Hmm? What what actor was that? That no, it wasn't an act. actor. I'm talking about the the, the director. Oh, I know, but whatever happened to the guy that was Amadeus? He was hot when it won the Academy Award, and now you never hear of him anymore. Wait, no, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me just look this up. I, it, it, I, it's Amadeus. Gonna, I'm going to be really pissed when I look at the answer because I I, I know I might be right. <laughs> no, no, you no, no, no. And there was it was not thought, Gus Amadeus, Van Zandt. Amadeus. I'm sorry. Rock me, Amadeus. Remember that. No. Oh, Amadeus. Oh, God. I can't even type anymore. Amadeus. Here we go. It was directed by... Uh, where are we? Milos Forman. No. Oh, Milos. Yes. Yeah. What do you mean, no? Milos Forman directed uh, well, Amadeus. Then, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And he, yeah, he did do One Flew Over the Cuckoo's With Nest. With Jack Nicholson. And he did hair, I think, as well. What are you looking right. it up, Phil? If you look it up, I, it's going to say Milos Forman. Yeah, but it was Van Zant that I put the carpet in for, and I thought that uh, his wife and he got back just as I put it in. Uh, they were in Europe filming the movie. Well, maybe he was on the crew. 
No, no, this was the... No, no, is, no, the, no, 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 no. He, he bought a Ferrari California when he was there. And uh, are that, you? Do that, you even know who who Gus Van Zant is? Yeah, it was director. And the Gus Maybe Van Zant, you put Van you put the, the the carpet in for Gus Van Zant. I'm pretty sure it's been so many years. I'm well, gonna you, look. You, you couldn't remember that Milos Forman made the Amadeus. No, no, it wasn't him. Uh, all right, I'll I'll look. I I'm, I I my memory says it was Amadeus that they that they did. Um. All right, May, I'll look and see who else was on that movie. And uh, it, it, is it still up? You're there not going to find Gus Van Zant's name anywhere in Amadeus. In fact, I don't even know if he was a, a, a movie maker of any great note. You probably have the name wrong of the guy whose carpet you put in. I think it's Stephen Van Zant. Yeah. No, <laughs> could that? Have, no, it's not Stephen Van Zant. He's a rock and roll guy. No, I was uh, Stephen. No, no. My jokes are as funny as yours. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'll look. Who is the actor? Is it still up there, Alex, that played Amadeus? Tom Hulse. Oh, Tom Hulse from uh, the National Lampoon. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, one of those guys, you know, Belushi, that movie, right? Yeah. Animal House. Animal House, right. Yeah, he came up, sure. with, he, he says one of the, what I think the, are the greatest lines, one of the greatest lines in the, in the comedy film. The Negroes stole our dates. <laughs> I like the line where the, the guys come up, you know, the, the, the Negro guys, and they go, do you mind if we dance with your dates? Uh, yeah. Which that's like racist now, right? You couldn't really do yeah, that today, the, right? The Very Negroes racist. stole our dates. I just thought that was just a classic line. Just like in Blazing Saddles. What does he say? Um, I'm going to whip this out. Um, you, know, you, don't, you, you don't mind if I whip this out. Where are the white women? Yeah. Where are the white women? <laughs> no, where are the white women, right? That's very racist today. Like, I think well, you got to realize you got to realize that screenplay was written by five guys, one of which was Richard Pryor. Right, right. Okay. Place and Saddles. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I, I, Dinah Shore said the N word, and it was taken He's from a, a, the, comedy the, album. the original screenplay for that movie. I'm trying to remember the name of the director. He went and did uh, the In Laws. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name now, but he he did the original screenplay, and the name of it was anybody any guesses what it was called? You want to talk about racist? Black sheriff? I don't know. No, what. Black Bart. <laughs> Black Bart. That's close. Uh, that was close. the name in the movie, Black Bart. Yeah, right? well, the, the Bart. What Black Bart was a uh, was a uh, criminal in uh, California. He was oh. a gangs. He was an outlaw in California. And uh, his name was, they called him Black Bark because he was black. He was one of the few black outlaws that, uh, you know, of any real note. Uh, okay. So, but anyway, it was called Black Bart, the original screenplay. And then Mel Brooks took it over, changed it to Blazing Saddles. It got this guy to write it along with uh, Richard Pryor. And I can't remember who the rest of the writers were on that thing. So when you've got lines that are jokes like, you know, you mind if I pull it out or where are the white women or whatever, you know, I mean, because it, he, when he says that, where are the white women, it's it's when he's trying to get the, you know, Plan guys. The, the, the racists to yeah. like chase them or whatever so they can yeah. bop them over the head. So where are the white women at? You know, that's got to be a prior line. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Alex, can they release that? If they released that today, would they have killed Mel Brooks? Like I, the I, whole liberal thing? I, I don't think so. But then again, I don't know if he would make it in the same way. You know, it was made for the times. It was made, mm -hmm. you know. There was certainly nothing racist about oh, about it Blazing oh, Saddles. Yeah. It was pretty much, uh, uh, well, when he was, uh, when uh, the, the sheriff and Madeline Kahn were in the dark uh in her bedroom, mm -hmm. basically with the kibasas on the breakfast the next morning. I, I thought I was going to die laughing. Well, also the line, uh, is it, it's true, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> you know, is it true what they say about you black guys? It's true, it's true in the dark. <laughs> but there was a line that was cut out. Warner's made him cut it out. She goes, it's true, it's true. And then they would go to black. But it went longer than that. And you hear him say, 
Quit sucking on my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, another Mel Brooks line that was left out was in Young Frankenstein, in which you had Igor, and the hump kept changing from one side to the other. Did you ever notice that in the movie? Yes. It was always in a, didn't you, that hump it. used to be there? You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, forget it, you know. And then finally, they're at the big show where the, they're going to have uh, Frankenstein, the, the, the monster, come out and dance. And, and Igor shows up, and he doesn't have any hump. Uh, and and uh, the line that was cut out was he said, Igor, where's your hump? And he goes, never with tails. Mm -hmm. Never oh, with tails. He was wearing a top hat and tails. <laughs> never with tails. You know, so you never wear your hump with, oh well, but that was cut out too. <laughs> I'd have cut it out too. Yeah. Uh, That's a really great film. I love Young Frankenstein. Yeah. I could watch that a hundred times. And Terry Garr was in it, and she was great. It's funny. Years ago, I I interviewed uh, Peter Boyle right after he'd made oh, Young, yeah. right after he'd made Young Frankenstein, and he sat in my apartment in a big chair that I had, and sat there very stiff, just like the monster. <laughs> oh my God! And the next time I met him, he had just played another part, and he had a completely different aura about him. It's like he would get into a part and then hold mm -hmm. on to that part till he got the next one. Method mm -hmm. actor. You know. Extreme. Huh? Method actor to the extreme, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So it was... I, uh, could say, I guess you could say the same thing about Leslie Nielsen. That would be funny. Well, he, uh, he, did, could, he could do anything, you know. I mean, for years he was a... Phenomenal talent. Underrated, yeah. unfortunately. Much yeah. like... I, I don't know if he was underrated. Uh, I, I I think that he certainly had several careers, and the most successful one was when he was doing all those spoofs. Because Airplane he was and it's dynamic off screen. Does he beat the note up on the plane? Mercury slaps her around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Phil's not sleeping, right? He's reading or something. Oh. Uh, Phil's, no, I'm Phil's trying, trying to... to prove that Gus Van Zant directed uh, Motel. Oh, okay. uh, okay. okay. I'm a well, Phil, if I got, I may have yeah. gotten the movie wrong. And uh, so now I'm looking to see uh, what else he did. And maybe that's, I, I got the movie wrong. Hey, it's been since like 1984. Well, you, you've gotten everything wrong tonight, what Phil. You've gotten everything wrong. Of course. No, no, Trump was right. It wasn't 3,000 died. Yeah, he got, he, didn't he 29.75. He's off by how many? He's yeah. off by 25, Okay. Um, hey, either you're right or you're not. He said it wasn't three thousand. That's all. You know. Hmm, here comes uh, here comes Jeff Stein. You know, if we keep this up, there'll be more people on the citizen panel than are watching us. That's right. So uh, <laughs> are you up to twenty four? Yeah. Well, it, yeah, it comes out to more after after the show, but. I look at the current number. It's been slow lately. I don't know why. Is this show getting too boring, folks? Do I need to? Just change it completely. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll add topless women. That's what I'll do. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Charlene. Uh, <laughs> assume the position. Yeah, I'll just, oh. I'll just whip it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but did yeah. you find out what movie it might have been? The, are you sure no. it was Gus Van none Zandt? Of the, none of the movies that he's done uh, sounded familiar. Name, name some of them. I probably heard of them and you haven't. Well, no, it's just it's just that those weren't name, the ones name, that they said. I was sure it was Amadeus. Name a few. I think he did. Uh, you know what he did do? Um, oh no, no. I think that was Richard Linklater. Well, let me did, let me go uh, back to his. Uh, are you saying Gus Van Zant or Gus Van Zant? Yeah. Yeah. That's who you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, I, I'm familiar. But with there, on that list is Psycho, right? Did you make the psycho? No, I'm I'm still trying to uh, get back to where I was. Okay, uh, I don't have a way to Google, or I would do it. Yeah. Why don't you do drugs to a cowboy? You don't Google your IMDb. Wait a minute, who? I tried to. Yeah. I tried to IMDb, and I didn't find anything on him. Let's see, Lost Boys. Are you pronounce? Are you writing his name correctly? 
Uh, V A N. Next word S A N T. No. Uh, no, it's uh, Gus first. Gus Van Sant. Gus Van. I think it's S A N T. I think Is it's... it Van or Van? I think it's Van. It's Van, yeah. Oh, no, I'm thinking. Oh, I, I know he didn't do Amadeus. I oh, oh I know. Him. I know what you're thinking of. What? Oh, okay. I'm now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make you feel. You're gonna almost feel that you're right, but you're not. Oh, uh, what's that? Um. Uh, the um. Producer on the film. Yeah. Was. And I'm trying to remember his first name because I hate the motherfucker because he threatened to sue me once. Do you live in Berkeley? Yes. Okay, uh, that's the guy. Uh, uh, Saul Zance. That's it. Who's Look this? at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now, did he work on Amadeus? He produced it. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the guy. Okay, so somehow he was. Well, right. hey, you know it's it's been twenty five years. Major, major fucking, yeah. major fucking prick. <laughs> he was nice. He's, to me. The, he's the guy that kept uh, uh, what's his name, uh, John Fogerty, from performing for something like twenty five years. Really? Because he owns Fantasy Records, and Creedence yeah. Clearwater recorded for Fantasy Records, and when he had a falling out with Van Zant. Van Zant said he couldn't record any songs that sounded like Creedence Clearwater or he would sue. Uh. And for about 25 years, maybe 20, 25 years, Fogarty really had couldn't, no career. Yeah. And, and, you know, finally Van Zant died and, and the people who bought Fantasy Records made peace with uh, Fogarty and said, why don't you just come back and record for us, you know. All right. Well, you know, hey, memory slips. But I, I told, I told the story I just told you about yeah. Saul, uh, about uh, Saul Zance, and uh, the next thing I know, See, we, get call, we, we get a call. We get a call, fat fuck. Uh, yeah, we get a yeah. call from uh, from lawyers yeah. uh, saying uh -huh. uh, you can't say that about. We're going to sue if you say that uh -huh. again about uh -huh. Saul Zance. Zance, or Zance was just he was a very litigious fuck. <laughs> his wife was a really nice person. I, that's who I. I had don't most give a shit about with. his fucking wife. <laughs> yeah, but and Saul I'm sure Zance, and I'm I know it was Amadeus, but this is Gus Van Zant, Sal Zant sounds close enough. Yeah, it's like nuclear. So that's where you, yeah, because I I was thinking, how do we spell Gus Van Sant? And it's S A N T. And then I I was thinking, well, is it Z? And then I thought, well, wait a minute, who has the name Z? That's like that. And then I suddenly went, oh yeah. The guy who produced Amadeus was Saul Zanz. I don't know Saul how you Zance. pull this shit out of your, out of your ass. These, these, these facts are, are you know, <laughs> and there's so many of I them. I used to be better at it. it. I used to Un be better at it. Unbelievable. I used to be better at it, but I've gotten lazy since there's IMDb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Amazing. Hey, Patrick, how are you? I was just going to say something similar to what Phil said, because I... You did what two or three with um, bubbles where you did the um, trivia thing, and I, I was just sitting there wondering how the hell you knew this shit, you know. And, and it, it's all the obscure thing. So if you were better at it, that's wonderful. But you're still impressing the shit out of I think all of us. Yeah. Anyway, so, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I you know, with IMDb, I don't have to be that brainy anymore. I can just, you know, look it up on IMDb. As I said, my friend Shecky would make me look like a piker. Shecky just, mm -hmm. uh, you know. He has a good memory, Alex, for all that stuff. Yes. Saul Zant's died, right? Him, I think. Yes, I hope he's dead. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, stop. That's not right. Is he dead, really? The guy? Yes, he's dead. I said he oh, was dead fuck. in the very beginning. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't oh, know. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to go to his funeral just to make sure he was. <laughs> hey, hey, that's, I missed my buddy uh, there that I thought I saw in the restaurant. It's like, I can't remember who the two people were who were quoted as doing this. There was a horrible guy who, who ran Columbia Pictures by the name of... Uh, of, of uh, um, uh, now my mind. See, when I have to suddenly come up with something, I, uh, I, a cone. Um, and Harry right. Cohn, Harry Cohn, and okay, he was he, he uh, ran Columbia Pictures for years and uh, ran it like a 
you know, like in prison. I mean, he was just a, he, just, it was one of those Hollywood pricks, all right? So he dies, and it's the funeral. And I can't remember who the two people were when that had this back and forth. But as they walked up to his coffin, uh, one of the guys looked at the other and went, wow, could you imagine this many people showed up for Harry Cohn's funeral? And the other guy said, give the public what they want, they come. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, uh, another strange uh, carpet job today uh, my one of my installation crews was working, uh, cutting a job in my warehouse for Linda Ronstadt, uh, and uh, she has Parkinson's, and uh, right. she lives at uh, 26th, uh, just one block from Elk. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, Announce that on the air. We can all go by yeah. and uh, rob oh, her no. house. No, in, C in Seacliff. Uh, her, her phone uh, what was that address again, Phil? What was yeah, it? yeah. It's on 26th. Uh, near uh, El Camino, whatever that street I, is. I used to have a thing for Linda. Yeah, she, she just I think was, everybody she, did. Very she, cute. Yeah. She yeah. was you hot. Have a poster. She was hot, and and you know I, I, I was at some demonstration that she was at, and all of a sudden she turned around and looked and went, "Hey, Alex, hi!" And I <laughs> thought to myself, she recognized me. She remembered me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was You're adorable. Smart. She was adorable. Yes, he was. Yeah, what was she doing he with was like a uh, Valley Field the kind of governor? Thing. The governor? What? He was yeah. a, he was a pretty good looking guy back in the day, you know? He was yeah. he was quite a catch, yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. was hip. Yeah. yeah. Moonbeam. But uh yeah. And then who else who today. did she go out with next? Uh no, I don't know. George Lucas. Oh wow. Oh she really you know, yeah. I was in a hair salon in Soho when she was getting her hair done and the guy was doing her hair that I work for. So we went in the back to get the color. And I said, you know, you Steph, I said, your client looks a lot like Linda Ronstadt. And he went, it is Linda Ronstadt like that. Mm -hmm. And then they got mad at me and George Lucas came in while she was eating See? a barbecue ribs. And they didn't say anything to me because they were so afraid I would go up and like go, Oh, George Lucas, George Lucas. So they didn't tell me. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was so mad. Well, they know you well. Oh, yeah. They used to call me celebrity monger. <laughs> I came up with something, and it was uh, it was true a true story. Uh, she was going with uh, Lucas. Lucas, at that time, had a home in San Anselmo up on the hill. Beautiful. In fact, the home is still there. I think Lucas still owns it. Uh, it, it looks like uh, a lot of the... It was kind of designed the same way a lot of the property at uh, Skywalker Ranch was designed, like in, in a Victorian kind of fashion. And he lived up on the hill. And uh, Linda went into, I found out, because I, I lived in San Anselmo, and I was talking to a pharmacist. He says, you'll never guess who was in here. And I said, who? He said, Linda Ronstadt came in. And I said, oh, yeah, she's going with uh, Lucas. She lives up the hill. And she goes, yeah, she came in to buy condoms. <laughs> so I went on the air and started talking about Linda Ronstadt buying condoms and wondering why, because according to stories, uh, Lucas always adopted children because he wasn't capable of having them. Oh. And supposedly Lucas got very mad at me. <laughs> because I, I, I said, what does he need the condoms for? You know, STDs. always making friends, but oh, yeah. Geez. Well, maybe it was to protect Lucas. That's why when I was at Skywalker Ranch having lunch one day, and he was sitting at the table next to me, I didn't go over and say, "Hi, George, Alex." You know, so, whatever. Yeah. You know, you guys are talking about condoms. You know, I noticed today. I've been seeing this commercial for a while, and I can't, I can't tell you what the name of the drug is, but. It's like if you're HIV negative, That's you can all. take this pill to prevent you from getting HIV. It's like, I guess there's not a cure for AIDS, but there's a pill that you can now take so you don't get it. So it's the vaccine? Yeah, I, I wish I could remember. Something with a TR. I saw it on TV. Oh, sure, something. It took yeah. me a while to see what the commercial was. 
And all of a sudden, a light true, bulb went off. True livity said, or true... Something uh, like that. And I yeah. said, wow, there's a pill for people to take to prevent AIDS, they say. Yeah. I said, boy, that's condom. People in high risk. Like, oh, in high risk for AIDS. Yeah. Like, oh, so they even test you to see if you're a high risk to get it. No, well, wait, no, well, no. I, I mean, no. people that, you know, have, uh, like... I, I don't know. They, they have jobs with sex. sex a lot, or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, oh, I like mean, them. but wouldn't wouldn't unprotected sex, it, it, when we're talking about AIDS, uh, be high risk? Well, uh, I have unprotected sex with my wife. Okay. Yeah, but, it, but it's not high risk. I mean, getting AIDS. I don't think. Oh, I so know, you're gonna have you know, multiple partners. You mean like? Yes. Yes. Oh, exactly. Okay. Or maybe, Catholic, maybe gay sex. Started. I don't know. Whatever you know. But. <laughs> I'm Catholic too, but you know, like I, I figured, you know, sorry, I'm a fallen Catholic, but <laughs> I'm not into like uh, monogamy, you know, like stuff like that that much. Don't you know? tell that to your husband. I know it, he's <laughs> asleep, Thank God. No, yeah. he'd be having a fit if he heard that. <laughs> I gotta but, go explain uh, to my wife while I'm having sex with her. <laughs> <laughs> Please and me. Scott, you must Don't be against the Don't forget to fill abortion. out a flow chart. Don't forget to fill out a flow there. chart. Did you say that, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or a pie graph, a hair pie graph. Well, now we're now we're taking it into the dumper. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, um, on the view today, they have an Asian woman that's the head of Planned Parenthood now. She was on there, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they had a whole big thing going on and she's such a nice Asian lady, very sweet and nice. I wonder if she can handle this job, I thought, because uh they were like confronting her. There's a woman on there now that's the conservative, I forget her name. Her father works in the government or something, you know, with Trump. And um she it's, was sort of telling it's her Hunts, Huntsman. Yeah, that's it. Huntsman. Yeah, what's her name? I can't remember her first name. Her, her, her father is the ambassador to, to Russia. That's it, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, she she is she's not. She, sometimes you don't even see that she's a Trump person, but Didn't then sometimes Huntsman, she'll come out. And, Huntsman yeah. ran for president. Well, actually, I don't know that she is necessarily for Trump. I don't think Huntsman, her father, I don't think is for Trump. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, because now he, Republicans he got made are an ambassador, that he's so. out of control, right? That's the whole yeah. point now. Nah, that that's that's fake news. <laughs> I, you know, still I'm, a lot of I, you know, like Phil. You. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he's, I'm gonna he's censor crazy, you. Phil. I'm gonna make you stop <laughs> labeling things as fake news. Anytime you don't agree with something, all of a sudden it's fake news. Okay, it yeah, was like, bullshit. How's that? I like Trump did come up with the fake. It's I'll, 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 up I'll, stuff. I'll accept that before fake news. Okay, yeah. it's bullshit. What what's happening is is pe uh, you're getting all of these stories yeah. that are uh, that are being told to try to discredit the guy. Meanwhile, everything he's doing, he's doing, uh, and he's doing a good job at. It. Like what? Like yeah. what? Like uh, the uh, like dealing with uh, the Chinese on stealing. Uh, oh, oh really? That's really going to work out really well because according to my mm -hmm. wife, who came back from China. They the last laugh is going to be on us, okay? Well, right, like that it's going to hit phone. us economically in the worst way because they they're they're, 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 they're also throwing tariffs up of the same amount. Oh, and, they don't take our stuff anyway. Well, wait a minute. Uh, and, and and on top they of that, steal it. On top of that, no, just, just just wait till the next time you want to buy yourself a little piece of electronic equipment. All of a sudden, it's twenty five percent more than it was. Hey, my floors are going to be twenty five percent more than it was. I'm repricing right now. Yeah, oh, really? yeah. And you, you don't think that's going to hurt business? To slow it down? Uh, it may, or it'll just direct it over to American products that don't have the tariff. Well, why aren't you? If you're such a wonderful American, why aren't you using yeah. those American products now? I am. Well, but, then what uh, are you complaining about the 25% tariff? Obviously, you're not going to have to pay for it on uh, under... Uh, well, uh, I'm on not... The... not I, I am still offering uh, for sale, plus the tariff, uh, the Chinese products. Although, uh, I think it'll make the American products more desirable uh, because they were more expensive. 
now uh, they'll be able, to, people will be able to get an American product at a competitive price. No, maybe maybe business will slow down because people don't want to have to put out that kind of money for some floors that they say we can live live with for another couple of years. Oh. Exactly. Sometimes. You know, I, I asked somebody once, you would think, uh, uh, I'll give you a business in which, uh, boy, numbers are going down tonight. What What is it? I guess we're just boring, huh? Well, fuck all of you all who are hanging and not listening. They can't hear me. Uh, anyway, the point is that, that I... Uh, uh, Somebody's audio is overriding you. What is that? It's not like me, an, air, it? an air conditioner. Okay, I'm going to turn it off and I'll sweat, though. So. Well, I I'm have an air conditioner. Well, just mute. Oh, mine isn't on. No. Any, anyway, uh, um, what was I going to say? We were talking about. Uh, uh, oh yeah, uh, you would think certain things are recession proof, okay? And I one of the things that's re re recession proof is being a barber. Yeah, mm. everybody <laughs> needs to get their hair cut, right? But you don't think people wait longer between haircuts? Well, well this is what I was going to say. I asked the barber once. I said. Does this economy, because it was on a down economy, you know, it was in a down economy. I said, has the economy hurt your business at all? And he said, yes. And I said, but everybody needs a haircut. He said, yeah, but they wait longer. Same with dry cleaning. So we're, yeah. So if I have all of my clients do one less haircut a year, uh, I'm losing a lot of money. So, right. you know, so, I mean, with you and your, uh, your, your stuff, people are going to wait uh, to give it a second thought before they put in some flooring because the price is getting higher. Yes, well, Jeff. Customers could be going yes, gold, Jeff. Too. Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I paid once and not have to come back for another six months. I remember when my business had a big down uh, change, and it was from 9-11. Yeah, and it was there was nothing to do about it. It was just everybody was in. Wait a minute, let's wait. Oh yeah, well yeah. Th th I have another theory though. Let's mm -hmm. you know remember when Boeing was having all of those problems up in Seattle, and there was like fifty percent unemployment. Mm -hmm. uh, well, those people weren't buying anything, but the fifty percent that were employed, mm -hmm. it, it was like there was never uh, anything going on, and they were still buying. So it's it's just you know, not everybody is unemployed. There's always, even if unemployment is much greater, or the the there's uh, things going on in the economic environment, uh, there's still people that are buying, and uh, you might have a smaller pie, but you can still do business. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess, but uh, yeah, I think Jeff agrees with that. You know. Well, except, you know, the business that I had is really a service business and, and it was developing products and it's not like they had something that they could sell anymore. Okay. Cause all the products that we developed, they took them and they were out in the market and we didn't uh, have any opportunity to do that again next week. We had to so create you had something it too. Uh, well, what do you mean? The R and D went away, or yeah, well, the, the R and D went, it didn't go away. It went on hold. Oh. Okay, don't spend the money. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So well, there, there was fear. It, it was. Oh yeah. <laughs> but but the best thing was I talked to because we we rented our uh, equipment. Uh, our facility, you know, yeah. not the machinery, but but the, the yeah. rent, yeah, the, the building. And I told her that I said, "Oh man, I'm having trouble." And she goes, "Don't worry about it." She goes, "Wait for six months. You don't have to pay me for six months. I can believe it." They, it would take a lot longer uh, for her to get someone else in there probably for a lot lower price. I remember when the uh, recession hit, my landlord said, I want to take you to lunch. And he, he takes me to lunch and he says, we're going to lower your rent because uh, we don't want to lose you. When did I have that? I had that happen here in uh, here in New York. And I'm trying to remember, I think it was when the housing thing burst. And, yeah. and, and really, we were in a bad economic way. 
my landlords downtown when I was living down on Houston Street said, uh, we're not going to raise your rent this year. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I thought that was a very nice gesture, you know, because they said things are hard and uh, we, uh, we, we want, want you to not feel the pinch as hard. So that, that yeah. was very, very you. nice. What? Well, they don't want to keep, keep you. you. As a customer. Y yeah. Well, they didn't. I wound up moving uptown here. So. <laughs> Whereas, but that was a long time. When I, and now I have an ongoing fight about this apartment. So, you know. Mm. Mm. So anyway, Keep what, fighting. what else is happening in the news? Oh, yeah, we got the big storm. Here's what I was saying to girlfriend tonight. Because I turn it on. To begin with, all, uh, 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 all these idiots, I mean idiots, all these idiot anchors are standing out in the middle of the storm trying to anchor their newscast. I said that the exact same thing to my wife. Why has Lester got to do the fucking news from a pier in North Carolina? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, Why? and you, I want them to blow over. Well, <laughs> you know, I was hoping like a timber or something would hit him and kill him, you know? Yeah, a boat come across the front of him because and knock him in the water. Because he, here's how the reporting goes. They're telling everybody to leave the area. Do not stay around. It's dangerous. If you stay here, you may die. So we'll fly in and stand Yeah, in but I'm standing camera. here in the middle of it, right? With my little <laughs> yellow slicker on. Um, and... Uh, I went from network to network. I found that uh, ABC and CBS were a little smarter. They were a little bit more upstream. So they weren't as windblown as, as, as Lester. They had umbrellas. But why all these people, when they're reporting a storm and saying that nobody's supposed to go out in this storm, they're standing out in the middle of it? hanging on to trees and everything. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. They're the only people allowed, right? Yeah. I mean, the classic was the time Geraldo Rivera did one of those stand-ups or flop-downs because, do you remember? The wind got uh, him and he just completely <laughs> fell on his ass. Yeah. He was always doing those shots. Yeah. Oh, and and I, we, I, I'm the only reason off. I can think that they do them is bragging rights. Oh, look how brave Lester is to report the news. No, look how stupid Lester is. You know, I don't want a weatherman who's going to go out in that. I want a weatherman who's going to stay dry inside the studio with a weather map. Okay? I'm getting tired of seeing the same old eye of the, uh, of the hurricane. Yeah, well, they're all the yeah. same. Once you've seen them all, once you've seen them all. Anyway, so I then, to said, to her, I, I then said to her, um, do people in, in California for instance, give a shit about this hurricane. I think so. You do? Really? I mean, you watch it and then it, it's newsworthy yeah. enough that when they give you 15 minutes of it at the top of the news, you love every 15 minutes of that? No, nah, I don't love 15 minutes of anything, but, you know, uh, I I watch it. It's it's interesting. You you see the people boarding up stuff and, and getting prepared, oh, fighting, fighting, <laughs> fighting over food. You love and, to watch people's misery. But yeah, it's, only, it's only 15 minutes of it, and they just loop it and loop it and loop it and loop it and loop it. I mean, every time I, every time I turn on to MSNBC, to MSNBC today, they were showing storm, the storm stuff. The only time they broke for that was when they talked about Trump and his idiotic statement about, the, about Puerto Rico. Okay. And it was yeah. going to be very wet. Too. Yes, that Patrick. Island. It's going to be wet. <laughs> Patrick, 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 I'm going to watch. <laughs> I'm going to go down there and throw more paper towels. Yes. Anyway, Patrick. Surrounded by big water. There was a, another big story that should be getting more news than it is. Washington. The uh, gas explosions all over Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. Is that what that is? Now, why? Yeah. Trump's fault. Why are there, boy, we're losing more people. What is this? Is the signal bad tonight or something? I don't know. Anyway. Well, the Skype is okay. Well, I don't care. Uh, you know. I, yeah, I, that gas thing is pretty creepy. That's almost like what's happened up here in San Bruno. And we yeah. lost a whole bunch of houses well, over here. Well, yeah, what 20, is, what, 30 I, houses, I, I, but this I, was Wait big. a minute. Now, I ha didn't follow this story that much because, as you say, yeah. the other story so, was taking such precedence that this was a sidebar story. Uh, yeah, it, well, the, the, the gas companies 
and local, you know, uh, utilities here, I guess, depressurizing all of the pipes uh, that the gas flows through so that they can figure out what exactly is going on. I don't think they have a handle on what's going on, but they've evacuated several thousand people from especially around the Boston area. Patrick, I thought the reason the pipes blew was that there was too much pressure. And yeah, either depressurizing it. No, they off. don't know. They don't know because it's randomly coming out. And what happens, There's there could be a leak in the pipe or a crack in the pipe, and, it, and it, it'll get out through the pipe and then travel through the earth and then come out. You know, it's the, like water. The gas is coming resistant out. Resistant pressure. The gas is come out yeah. up through the dirt, yeah. and then all of a sudden find a the, place. The to gas ignite. is coming out randomly. You say? Well, if it, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I, know, like, I, like I, after I, a I, bad I have that problem occasionally it's, myself. Yeah, it's like after so. a bad dinner, it'll just yeah. come out randomly, <laughs> out of a crack. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> but here but it, it'll travel through the through the dirt and then pop up somewhere. I, I've not, I've not, my son. They had to replace all the pipes in this one section of Dallas it, it, because the pipes were so old that they were cracking. Gas yeah. was smelling everywhere, and it actually uh, did blow up. Well, one after, house, after the earthquake in blown up several. After houses. the earthquake in San Francisco, they yeah. retrofitted the entire marina where I lived and all the gas uh, there because what happened was is that the the gas pipes were so old that they were rigid, and they really should be replaced by flexible. Yeah. Uh, so that when there's an earthquake, they don't crack. Right? Yeah, it's happening all over the place. It's with water, too. Yeah. Well, what it is, like, it's, it's the old technology, which just stayed in place because it was too expensive to change. Well, it. and it's also what they found out out here with that well, San Bruno thing, like, thing, is that the inspection... The inspections weren't being done correctly, and these guys would go out and just sit and fill out clipboards, and they wouldn't do the inspections. And then they found out that the, yeah. you know, the, the the stuff was going bad anyway, and they were falsifying the records. Well, in the in, 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 the, in the marina in San Francisco, the reason why the fires happened was because of the pipes. Yeah, you know, they the were hundred-year-old pipes. Yeah. Yeah, so finally when they retrofitted the entire, they had to retrofit the entire marina. It was all retrofitted with, uh, with flexible tubing. Uh, and now if there's an earthquake, there's no problem. We'll yeah. Move around a little bit. Yeah, they, you, you got to have flexibility. Also, they went and re retrofitted some of the foundations. They put them on rolling foundations. Uh, they so, also uh, put, uh, on the ones with brick, they put the uh, these uh, big screws through it and uh, and retrofitted them to keep them from busting apart. Right. Uh, and they put shear walls up so that uh, the if the foundation if it moved, uh, it would move in different directions. Yeah. 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 Now, one thing they had in the marina was that all the garages were on the bottom floor. Right. And they had very little support. Uh, so, you know, you had 10 garages on one side, 10 garages on the other side, and uh, basically this uh, three, four-story building was standing on nothing. You know? that, well, yeah, but you could say the entire place is standing on nothing because of an apartment, when it doesn't have furniture in it, pretty much is an empty space as well. But, yeah, but it's the underneath uh, the yeah. the columns that well, held up the well, building. What they did in my apartment house is they re put in the columns uh, and put in big giant columns that aren't didn't going your, anywhere. Didn't your apartment have like just one garage and you and you went in and there was a lot of spaces? No, there, uh, were, there were two garages, one on each oh. si side of the apartment house. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Which brings up uh, the Millennial Tower. Yeah. Who, they found another crack, and one of the windows on the 39th floor split open. That was where the homeowner jumped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all ought to jump at this point. Yeah. That thing is going to go. I think we're going to see something ugly on that damn thing. Well, they're blaming uh, that Trans Bay. Uh, yeah, whatever. They're going to blame somebody on it, but that thing is sinking, I'll it, bet. It's Trump's fault. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, is that is that the, is that the building that's that's tilting? 
It's leaning, yes. yeah. It, it's sinking, too. I had yeah, heard that they... A, they've found another crack in it, and a, a, a window up on the 39th floor cracked a couple weeks ago. Because I had, heard, I had heard they'd solve the problem. No, no, no. Oh. Only oh, at the no, Mini Tower going. of Pisa. There's Mini water coming through it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Water? That'd what? be ugly. Yeah. See, see, and Jeff, he... you think we have problems here, right? Did you know? <laughs> Oh, it's it's how many stories is that? Forty stories? Oh, it's stories? like fifty something, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's yeah. huge. Yeah. So yeah. if that goes over, uh, they're going to have to take it down. I think. Did we just lose? Yeah, but Brian? how the hell are they going to do that? Uh, that was um, I don't know who left. That's Brian. Probably Trump. Brian's gone. Oh, Brian. Uh, Brian's gone. Okay. He looks sleepy. Yeah. He looks sleepy. Yeah. He uh, usually says goodbye. It could have been banned. Just imploded. Yeah. Getting wet. But uh, well, there's, there's there's nothing wrong with the uh, live feed. Uh, it's uh, I know it's fine. I can see it here. I I monitor the live feed all the time. Oh, okay. In fact, I'm I sweating have two here, but I'm not going to put my air on because it makes too much well, noise. <laughs> take your top off. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> you just have to mute while the air is on. Now, you don't have to now, suffer. now we I'll had a, you hundred thirty thousand dollars. We had elections. I'm not he, we had elections here in New York. Oh, uh, oh, oh really? She did, lost. Uh, Nixon. did that she woman, lost. Cynthia Nixon, lost? She was yeah. an Amadeus. I voted for Cuomo. Yes, yeah, she was an Amadeus. Well, you got one fact right tonight. Yeah. Probably because you were looking at IMDb when you looked up Amadeus. That's exactly it. Yeah, okay. I was going yeah. to, to mention, you know, uh, she is she your governor? And I guess the answer is no. No, but I think she could be eventually. I think that this was her desire to have a test run and uh, that if uh, Cuomo decides to run for president or something like that, it'll leave an empty space here. She might also go for senator at some point, you know. Oh, good, yeah. Uh, and I, Do you I, remember I, the well, Let me finish. Let me finish. She yeah. was, uh, she's really, I think, bright. I think she's accomplished. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to see her be president right now, but I think a representative is in the, in the offing. That's for Dan. You know, sure. Alex, uh, I, thought, I thought because New York, you know, she was a, um, you know, a gay uh, woman, you know, I thought maybe that uh, New York was so hip she might win, but no, I guess well, Cuomo... Uh, uh, had more money and everything. Well, in power. Uh, she well, she had about uh, two million dollars for her campaign, which she got basically mm -hmm. from a lot of movie people who liked her and wanted to give right. her the money. And uh, uh, he had fourteen million uh, for yeah. his campaign. So uh, that was the that was the you, difference. I know what lost it for. Her. Yeah. I was watch. I saw her. There was a YouTube segment of her dancing at a uh, at a rally and uh, her, the way she dances do you remember the Seinfeld uh, uh, episode uh, uh, where, uh, yeah. Louis uh, Dreyfus uh, was uh, was dancing uh, and she dances just like uh, uh, Dreyfus Elaine Elaine yeah yeah uh, so uh, the, the kicking of the leg it was like she took Dreyfus lessons yeah. yeah. So, well, uh, I I think she's kind of. Was well, there a joke in that diet drive? <laughs> no, I, I guess you don't <laughs> watch Seinfeld. And I'm not. Don't watch and I, and, and I'm not crazy. I'm I'm not crazy about Cuomo, you know. So. You're crazy uh, about Cuomo. Yeah, but on the other not hand, on the other hand, the question would Either be was Trump. Two the, terms. The other question would be. That's it. You know, we know we have a full house when and, you see a line come up at the bottom. I, and I can't figure out why that line comes up, but it does. So Hello. Hello. Hey, Ray. Ray Renati may put us over the top tonight. We now have more people officially wa talking on the Citizens <laughs> panel than are watching the show. No. That's because we're really... Yeah. Yeah. Did Jeff Stein's Matt, camera go off? aristocrat has the audacity to want uh, Jeff Stein's camera went off, yeah. Okay. You might I thought try maybe my Skype was doing something weird. You might try turning it back on, Jeff. Well, my phone's battery died. Whoops. It's we, just, we just lost I Ray. Huh. Yeah, damn. Yeah. We're losing a lot of people. Yeah. Maybe it's just a bad internet tonight. Bad Ooh. internet. Nah, Brian pissed him off. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Net neutrality. 
I didn't do anything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what then, group. Okay. Now Who's we'll gonna... see what happens hey. here. Okay. Oh, I see. We got a problem here. Wait a minute. I gotta. I gotta redo this. Is this a Skype problem now? Huh? Uh, I think it's a Bennett problem. Well, let's see here. How many people do we have here? Ten. 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 We have ten. I lost Jeff. Oh, there's Jeff. Yeah. yeah. I, my uh, my yeah. VPN came on in the middle of when I was signing on. That's why I disappeared. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm having uh, some let's trouble see everybody. here. My my VPN won't allow me to log on to Amazon. Oh well, yeah, some of yeah, yeah. Really? Some of them. Yeah, I have to turn it off to go on to Amazon to buy something. Wait a minute, I gotta get everybody in here now. There we go. I think I can get on to Amazon, but I, there's some other sites I can't get on to find. Oh well, this has to go down. There we go. Now how do we, how does that work? Oh no. That's bad too. Uh, we got. I got a problem here, in just getting this all. Uh, For in the past, to... you've been able to do it. Huh? No. I, yeah. I. I. I have to. Uh, I have to. I want to get. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Uh, there's only one person that I can see that's uh, halfway off the uh, screen. Well, I'm trying to uh, take care of it here, Phil, so just give me Can a moment. pull them down a row? Huh? No, Can just, pull, just pull no, them? no, just leave me alone, Phil. I know what I'm doing here. Uh, that's you know? famous last words. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to solve the problem, and I can't. That's what she said. Yeah. Yeah, and then that's not supposed to be like that. Yeah, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Damn it, Janet. Uh, here we are, and then we go over yeah. here, and we go over there. Just keep talking to each other. I got stuff Damn to it, do. Damn it, Janet! Now. Yeah. Well, hey, sure, this you is kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which, which, which uh, do you, the Linda Ronstadt show? Yeah. No, no, they just started. What about Linda Ronstadt? Uh, in the house. Yeah, my installation crew was doing the uh, labor for a uh, designer that. Uh, oh, and he was giving out well, her, she's address, a, her phone number. Right? Yeah, she lives. Mm -hmm. She lives in uh, Portola sea Valley. Cliff. No, Seacliff. Uh, oh, she on 20, She's just outside of Seacliff on Twenty Sixth. Oh, okay. Well, she around the corner from Robin Williams' old so house. So Ray can go visit her if he. No, I mean to uh, play back. <laughs> she would. So I was taking this class, and uh, she was going to start the class because she couldn't figure out why she wasn't able to sing anymore. And then she it's found Parkinson's. out she had Parkinson's. Right. And then uh, so she started taking the meds, and they worked well. So now she's on tour again right now. Oh, Ooh. she is. Her yeah. house doesn't ah. have an elevator, and she and it's got a ton of stairs, and she just bought it. You know, well, and yeah, I think, I, think, Parkinson's. I think the meds are working well for her. She didn't know she had it, and she couldn't sing, and she didn't know what was wrong. Alex, uh, I have an idea. Just yeah. throw this up in the air, see if it lands anywhere. Next to you, saying you were voicing your irritation earlier this evening and uh, Phil's uh, periodic use of the word fake news. <laughs> I was thinking uh, the next time he uses the words fake news, you could say this or some variant of this and say, yeah, fake news from fake Jews. Whoa. Uh, I don't think he'd go for that one. But... I'll use bullshit instead of fake news. Fake dead Puerto Ricans. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know he he was right. What? He was right. Who was right? There was. Well, there wasn't three thousand. There wasn't three thousand. It was two hundred. How many was it? Twenty nine seventy five. Oh gosh. Oh, you gotta be. Sh he said there was eighteen, Phil. I know well, it was eighteen when he left the island. So, so that's that's okay with you. <laughs> Rounding up uh, by seventy-five. I don't even believe that. Now. Well, I mean, 18... twenty-five people or whatever. Yeah, that's probably what he said about his mistress. Thought he was eight. Thought she was eighteen. Yeah. Nah, it's it's a joke. <laughs> you no, know? no, but it's not a joke when the president of the United States discounts the death of three thousand people, which is equal to the number of people that died on nine eleven. He, he claims that the. People that died died afterwards due to other reasons or ancillary reasons That's from, horseshit. you know, they didn't have air conditioning, they didn't have water, they didn't have uh, food, or they didn't have a lot of things, medical care. 
uh, a lot of things. Said. Well, that's that's why they died. Well, because of the hurricane, though. Well, it, it it's was a, it ancillary to the hurricane. Well, hurricane, that's what hurricanes but do. The hurricane People itself, die from the fact that... that I have, to, that, no, no, I have a feeling still, it's also due to the fact that's that... Bullshit. I mean, I, was, I knew I was going to go on here and you were going to apologize for that crazy asshole's <laughs> remark about that. And Oh, no, I never, I never apologized for it. But isn't the United uh, States are trying to justify it or like a boa constructor to unite for to, to Puerto Rico? I mean, they release all these kind all kinds of restrictions on what Puerto Rico can buy and from what parts of the world and uh, and other things. If if that is a contributing factor, you know, lack of air conditioning or adequate infrastructure, that yeah. again the blame goes back to us, the good old United States of America. That they That's what American. the governor of Puerto Rico says is that they're being treated like second class citizens. And they have been but for decades. It's not Trump. It's yeah, it's been for a hundred years that uh, they have been No, you and know, you're right, it's not just way. Trump. And let's right. not forget, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, but for him to blame it on the Democrats and say it's a skin, uh, some kind of No, skin. they're twisting the numbers because what he said was look, mm -hmm. sixteen or how, however they didn't many report people the numbers. That was reported from the governor of Puerto Rico, not the Democrats. But hey, the governor of Puerto Rico is a Democrat. By oh the way. Jesus! Christ. And, but the the thing is, uh, you know, if if six if the if the amount of people that yeah. died at the time of the earthquake was what was it sixty or sixty three? That's that's what Trump is saying. These other ones died not because of the storm, but because of the bad infrastructure after the storm. So, so, so in other words, it's like yeah. it's like saying that, like only um, twenty six people died at the uh, World Trade Center. The rest <laughs> of them all died afterwards because yeah. the building fell on well, them. Yeah, there was only twenty six people on that. Well, no, there was there was there was, 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 there was three yeah, thousand, wasn't off it? Of, like the ten story building, uh, ten, yeah. ten floor and on a hundred hundred story building to be counted. Yeah. By that logic, yeah. They buy. They died because of bad infrastructure, because the buildings were not built correctly to withstand the 767. No, you know, so it had but, nothing to do with the actual crash of the airplane into the building. Well, the, the airplane itself, when it crashed, what was there? Three thousand people that died. At, no, but, no, uh, that was because the building fell. It wasn't. No, no, only about fifty died from the actual plane hitting the buildings. Well, the rest uh, of it is just the Republicans trying to make the Democrats. Once again, we're it. splitting pubic hairs with razor blades. To uh, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> well, well, I know. But, so, okay. Uh, All right. Now, now there was thousands of people that died from cancer over the years afterwards. And uh, can you, this was I know you attribute this to the disaster, but if you look at the disaster itself uh, during the initial strike, uh, I, I don't remember how many people died. I thought it was three thousand. Mm. Everybody gets free paper towels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be snakes. It's going to be very big. Excuse me, very excuse wet. me, everybody. I've been uh, I've been preoccupied with trying to get this picture right. Because for some reason I reset this uh, the wettest the Skype, ever. and uh, now I had to reset it. So now we have everybody in the picture, just perfect. Yeah. Now one person will go off, and you'll be back to where you were. No, no, no. This is, it's all fine now. If somebody yeah. were to leave, it would just balance itself out. You know. But, uh, I'm sorry if I wasn't participating. Jeff, has anybody? Uh, decided to talk about this guy who wants to become the new judge. Oh, I hear he's a shoe-in, someone said somewhere today. Well, but yeah, supposedly this uh, had some problems with a, a young lady yeah. when he was young. Was it, wait, they oh, 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 really? On him today? Yep. They were both minors. Who didn't have problems with girls when you were a minor? Hey, uh, what about uh, Collins, that they're offering a million dollars and they're threatening her uh, if she votes for uh, Kavanaugh? Uh, there's all sorts of death threats uh, on fake this. Fake uh, No, Susan That's Collins. That's fake news. Fake news. That's totally fake news. That's fake news. That's fake news. Totally so. fake news. Fake news. Fake yeah. news. That's fake news. Here's fake. something. I, here's I saw something. it on CBSN this morning. Oh, well, oh that's, that's fake news. 
It's, fake. That's, uh, yeah. it's, it. it's amazing, no, it's amazing uh, how you will quote the bullshit news. that those things are happening. Look at the guy in Castro Valley. Not. Some guy's running for congressman. He's, he was in Castro Valley at, at a thing, and some crazy guy started yelling anti-Trump stuff and tried to stab him with a switchblade. Oh and then they and they began fighting. That was Sunday. I don't believe it. It was uh, a, a guy uh, run, uh, uh, running for congressman. I don't. I What's think your it was, source? Okay, well, I have an interesting story here that I think you'll find wonderful. Thank you. Saying it would violate his deeply held religious beliefs, yes. area pornographer uh, Chet Kirkendall, a 57-year-old Christian who frequently films explicit amateur videos for his clients, confirmed Friday that he had denied service to a gay male couple that wished to hire him to direct their sex tape. Well, oh, that is I've been, I've been in this, do I've been in this business for 25 <laughs> years, and I strongly believe rim jobs, facials, and other hardcore sex acts should only take place between one man and one woman, or one man and two women. Or in some <laughs> cases, five men taking Catholic priest. five 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 men taking turns no, with young one boys woman. aren't involved, but never two men. These are post-pubescent. Can I finish buckets. reading this? Ah, he yells at someone else besides me. <laughs> <laughs> but never two men, said Kirkendall, who told reporters that after a career of directing hundreds of gangbang scenes of barely legal teenagers and a variety of stepmother-themed material, he wasn't about to violate his traditional Christian values by filming man-on-man -man action. Whatever. Works what a tough me. guy. By the way, what I just read you is fake news. It's, it's it's from the onion. Ah, cool. It's it from, from the onion. Or it's something? from the onion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. love the onion. You know, they're saying that Snopes is uh, is a lot of fake news, and that they're under contract with Facebook, and that they uh, only give the results <laughs> that they, they? want to give. Uh, now, what the situation yeah, is is the, the guy Thank who you. owns Snopes uh, divorced his wife and married a uh, a, a call girl. Uh, who is now one of his major fact checkers? Who's they? They. they, had they who is they? Who they the was the news uh, radio show that I was listening to oh, uh, the other morning mail. on the that way to work. That's fake. Yeah. Well, here, well, we, here and, we go, Jack. How do you know it's fake news? Just because it's the it's Daily a, Mail, you got that from. If it's not Fox uh, or a Fox affiliate, it's fake yeah, it news. Wasn't. I mean, it wasn't. we know that. Sinclair yeah. Station or that bloated uh, Temple Limbaugh. Uh, Actually, it was a clear channel station. I think it was KSFO. Uh, by the way, we've been, <laughs> oh, joined, that's fake we've been joined by Jack Bishop, who makes this a, news. A, Eleven. A, a royal flush. Right. I don't have that sound effect anymore. Thank God. Thank Christ. I, I'll have to download it again. Hey, listen, I'm just going to jump in and jump out. The most interesting thing that I heard about the Supreme Court nomination uh, was not about any sexual allegations, but about the question of gambling debts. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that too. Yeah, and, um, you know, another thing that I heard... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who, who was, to begin with, uh, I, I, I didn't get the story completely before I came on the air, but supposedly Diane Feinstein had some information about this guy. That's what we're talking she about. got it from her Chinese spy and, 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 driver. No, wait a minute, hold on a second, Phil. Uh, uh, now, who, who knows what that was about? Uh, yes, Jeff. Well, uh, the piece that I know is, is the... This guy from Connecticut asked him a question, which is, have you used more than $5,000 for gambling money? Oh. I don't know. Oh. And I don't know if he gave the right an answer. Okay. And supposedly the amount of money was anywhere from $120,000 to uh, $200,000. And fifty thousand dollars in gambling debt. Wow! So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, another thing about the Supreme Court that I'm gone uh, that is being talked about is reopening the questions of sexual improprieties involving. Um, it's just oh, a Me Too moment. Well, hey, it's, it's hard it, politics. But when it's your turn to no, do it. No, it's bullshit. You, 
All right. They kicked Al Franken out for having a little thing with on a USO the tour. Only, Phil. The only person that's seen this document is Diane Feinstein, and it's an un, un, an unnamed woman well, back look, in high school. Well, look, that's not what I was about to bring up. Reported by the New York Times. That oh, is not fake. What I was about to bring up, and look, it's <laughs> fair because, because with your boy Trump, he changed all the rules. Let's get bloody. Everybody's got a jugular, but it's your turn. I will be highly insulted if you don't go for somebody I support jugular as well. You know, Ooh, your violent boy, tendencies I, Phil, uh, is, is uh, no uh, different uh, than the rest of the Democrats. And, looking, uh, looking and, and your nonviolent violence that's all you got. Salt America. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Everybody, Patrick has his hand up. Yes. <laughs> I, I must say that. Of everybody on the panel that in the last several years, Jack is really the only one that knows how to argue and be entertaining at the same time. <laughs> Makes sense. And I can disagree with him all at once. So, yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Well, Jack, Jack, you don't have your camera on, so we can't see, see your face turning red. All right. You see, I got all excited there because of <clears throat> somebody who. Well, you said you were going to get on your knees for me last week, so... Oh, hey, like I said, you know, uh, pick the time, pick the place, draw a crowd, I'll be there. Uh, but what Just I was don't throw your back out, like I said before. That's, that's right. But what I was going to point out, uh, someone is talking about reopening the Clarence Thomas question. Hold a second. Hold, hold, hold on a second. I'm going to try and add Renee to this group, although I... Wow, 12. Renee... Uh, we can't we can't have you on because there's no way I can fit you on the screen. No, she's on. Do you want me to drop off? <laughs> yeah, why don't you drop off, uh, Tony? Yeah, if you I'll talk to you tomorrow night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to because I got a show to do. If we want to continue oh. this conversation, Mr. Myers would love to have you on the program tonight. Yeah, well, yeah. the dog gets walked at ten o'clock. Well, go walk or nine o'clock. Well, when you get through walking the dog, you, you know, and draining its lizard, come back they here. Like, they like Ray. All right. Uh, uh, Renee, Renee, what did you call about? No, I just wanted to see if I could crash the whole system. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, well, you, <laughs> you see, shit. we can only take, we can only take uh, uh, 10 people. What is it, 10? Break Skype like Kim Kardashian broke well, the no, internet. Uh, well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you had 13, though. Uh, no, I had 13, yep. but when I added her... I can't fit her on the screen. Well, I don't have a I don't have the option to have a photo, but you can keep or to turn on the video, but you can keep me on via voice, right? Yeah. yeah. Why, why don't you have the option to turn on the camera? It won't let me. It won't let you? Yeah, it's, sure, it's yeah. got a line through it. So normally when you pull up, you you know, it's open and you just click the camera button or the the video well, button if, if it's got a line in, so. through it just click on it and the line will go away no you remember yeah. when we had uh, eight people and then the ninth and tenth couldn't get their cameras yep. on oh that's interesting yes so now we're at 13 though right phil uh, not anymore just, not we're anymore. 11 again yeah oh okay but we could so when we were at 13 could we and you couldn't see me at all if i called back in we're at 10 so you should be able to see me when yeah. i call back yeah. and that was the other thing that would happen alex yeah one is i wouldn't be able to turn on the camera and two is i wouldn't be able to jump in i'd have to call back and turn it on oh i see okay well yeah hey as long as you're here and it's almost the end of the show did you guys have another hurricane and how did you fare Oh, thank you for asking. It's all fine. Poor Maui and Oahu got flooded, but it was only a, a side swipe of Oahu, which is great. But Maui's pretty wet at this particular point in time. Yeah, it was big, and it was wet. wet. <laughs> it was wet, yeah, wet, it wet. Was, we called them typhoons over there. Or something. Well, no, there's. So, by the way, everybody needs to pull up their map. There's a huge ass typhoon headed for the Philippines. And, and and if you remember, they've gotten hit three, not the Philippines, but Asia has gotten hit three times this year with big ass typhoons. So this is not good. And it's one on top of the other. Well, I remember yeah. last year seeing on Facebook a size chart comparison between uh, Maria and uh, Hurricane Andrew back in 1992. And it, I mean, Hurricane Andrew could fit inside. It was like twice as small. Almost twice as small as uh, Maria was twice as large. That yeah. can have a sexual connotation. 
No, just for you, Phil. Andrew, fit inside, Maria. No. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's with us. We're we're okay. We're fine. No need to worry. Hawaii's still here. They didn't wipe us off the map. So come on down. Okay, come on down. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, so anyway, uh, so I guess I get that volcano under control now. Girlfriend. Yeah, you don't piss her off just because she's taking a break does not mean she's gone. Girlfriend. Oh, I didn't say that. I just, said, they just have it lassoed in or whatever. Girlfriend got yeah. back from China and she said that in China, the most oft asked question was, "What's with that idiot you've got being president of the United States?" You betcha. And I know what Phil is going to say. I told her what he would say immediately. Yeah, well, that's the Chinese. That's what I was going to say, too. So Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, they they are getting caught with their hands in the cookie jar, finally. Somebody is standing up to them no, and no, saying, no. you can't do according, this. According to what she heard from them, they said, this is going to turn out to bite the United States in their ass. It is. Uh, and, and so they, is wait a minute. Let me, wait, hold on a second. With the enemy? Hold on a second, Phil. These are all financial people. People right. who know the financial uh, the financials of the world, so to speak, because they deal with the world, and that this is what the conference was about. And for them to say the United States has no idea what's coming, you know, it's the just, economy it's, couldn't be so... better right now. The economy isn't that much better, Phil. <laughs> Do you know that the middle class is finally coming back? That the oh my God, middle you class just bring that up. Uh, big income lie. is fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news, news, fake Somebody news. Wanted, no, stop, Phil, because they debunked the calculator that the that that Trump uh, Trump administration put out. They said that the calculator that Trump put out had a, a flaw in its calculations. No so batteries. They went, they went back and they used all the redid the calculations, and he was lying like shit. It was a Chinese uh, please, calculator. Please don't say that. Yeah. That, that Chinese yeah. analyst they got up there, that Kevin Strausser dude, looks like a pervert, man. He gets up there and he's got that smile and he puts up all those fake charts. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I mean, the fact is that uh, the uh, the people who uh, who should chart. benefit Here's a chart. aren't because it's a really uh, chart. wages are not up, you know. Mm -mm. Uh there's less people on food stamps. There's more people working. Oh, oh and, I know why there's wages are food rising. Food there's less what, people on what, food stamps wait, wait, because wait, wait, the entire wait. state of, of Oklahoma or Arkansas right. dumped their actual program. So, yay! They did what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kevin said something. What were you saying, Kevin? You were pointing to a piece of paper. I was just talking about that, that guy that was putting out the charts the other day, the analytical charts about how he was doing so great with the trends and the... the that guy's shit. a whack job. You, said and, Kevin you know, White? unemployment's the lowest it's been, what, in 49 yeah, years? Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless you're Except a black... Except for one uh, nine period. Make a chart. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It was one yeah. nine month period. No, it period. isn't. No, it isn't. That. No, accor according... Uh, in, 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 during Trump, it, it went down sufficiently. It had a bigger drop I, than he's had. The, the yeah. economy is not that much different than when when Obama was president. I, it was such a lackluster recovery. Business, I, I, oh I, a lackluster recovery. I, I Do you remember what we came store. from? We came from almost a, a depression, Phil. He kept yeah, us well, out of a out of a depression, and you don't it can't was give Bush him credit. Bush did that. Oh Bush no! Was the one that came no, up no, with no, the uh, stimulus mm -hmm. package. He only Anybody? used half the money. He gave the other half to Obama to spend as he pleased. Anyway, so listen, we got to we got to go towels. here. We got to go here. Everybody, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Good night. Uh, yeah, Phil, thank you. Very much. With my paper towels. Uh, 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 Charlene, thank you very much. My ass with my tiny hands. Thanks to uh, thanks to Brian. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks there. to Ray. <laughs> thanks <laughs> to Renee. <laughs> thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Patrick. Could thanks wet, to wet, Tony. Wet. Everybody, give a big uh, wave goodbye so they can uh, see you waving goodbye. Okay, that's the way we end every show, folks. And Phil dumped out early. Anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, that's our citizen panel. Wow, we had a lot of people on at the same time. This is uh, this is quite a night. Anyway, listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again uh, next time. But just remember, the Jack Bishop, who you saw a few moments ago, will be doing the intersection next over this uh, self same station. And then, uh, oh, hey, guess what? Yes, 
at one o'clock this morning. It's the beautiful sounds of Connections. And then tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin. He will be doing uh, the exchange. And then at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, I'll be back here. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.